Hey folks, this is your co-host Benjamin here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of That Can't Be Me In. Before we get started off, just a quick editor's note. In the beginning of the episode, Phil calls this episode four. This is only episode three. You're not missing out. If you tuned in to episode two, Cabin in the Woods, you probably caught the note there that we had recorded an episode that we had lost we were in the process of redoing that one. And we know the audio in this one might sound a little weird. We did everything we could. It's just how it is. Just please bear with us while we're still getting started out. Thanks and enjoy the episode. All right, this is episode four of That Can't Be the End. I'm, well, with your host, Phil, and co-host, Ben. We have a special guest for this episode. We have our friend Matt here with us. Howdy, howdy. Through a little bit of conversation, we found out that uh, all three of us are James Bond geeks, and... I hit Matt up and I said, would you like to talk about James Bond's worst movie? And his response was, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And I'm like, yeah, that movie's awful. Ab- absolutely. So we're going to go over a few things uh, with On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Um, ben, do you yeah. feel that it was a mistake um, or... Can you defend recasting Blofeld from Donald Pleasance as in the earlier movies to Terry Savalas from Kojak fame? Okay, that one, that one, I'm gonna have to disagree with you. That one, I think, isn't so bad. I think he does a pretty good job. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, I like that actor. Really? He's, he's good. He's he's creepy. I love his fucking voice. Oh. So I don't know. I think that one kind of works actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna be. Okay. Rare, rare point of dissent on that one today. What about you, Matt? Uh, honestly, I guess for continuity's sake, it doesn't make sense not to cut Matt off. No, I don't know too much about the guy, so okay, can't give too much of an opinion on that personally. Well, I remember Donald Pleasance as uh, Doctor Loomis from the original first two Halloween movies, and being a fan of the Halloween movies and then going back and watching the early couple of like uh, Bond movies that had yeah that was him <laughs> yeah that was the original uh, Blofeld was Donald Pleasance and he's he was really good Matt is googling this as yeah. we speak yeah that, that's why I'm so upset was because going back and like oh Donald Pleasance was so cool as a Bond villain he's my favorite Bond villain and um, funny enough you guys have all seen Spectre haven't you? Yeah of course I thought it was okay yeah, yeah. I thought it could have been better but the end of Spectre uh, Christoph Waltz was like I'm Blofeld and I was like cool they're rebooting Blofeld although I guess I guess I guess I will just say that point of you know us being bond nerds like to me a really bad bond movie is still like a pretty good movie it's still a good movie it's like you know pizza's pizza you have great pizza you have bad pizza like, even better than okay yeah but pizza, then you can yeah. do like gluten-free vegan pizza and then you're like still i'd rather good. not be eating pizza <laughs> as someone who eats gluten-free vegan pizza it's i eat good. like i eat an entire one of those man i don't give a fuck no shit no there's, shit there's a there's a pizza shop in Lawrence, Kansas that does like a, a vegan pizza on a gluten-free crust. Oh, it's fucking amazing. Waldo's well, got great options. And, yes. Anyway, but yeah, so, yeah, it's still, still a Bond movie, so yeah. Yeah. It's still cool. Okay, um, how do you feel about their choice as casting Lazenby as Bond? Do you think they should have given him another chance in a better movie, or do you, are you happy he just had that one film? I mean... There's only so much you can do. Not like he's a terrible actor. He's not. It but just... that movie was written like it felt like it's just like they had to get it done. I it mean, felt like, so rushed. You know, like I, I re that the whole movie fucking feels like that. It yeah, really does. Well, I, I mean, I rewatched it this morning for clarity and you know, sort of to yeah. refresh, get ready to record the episode. And like, man, yeah. I mean, again, George Lazenby's not a bad actor, but like it just looks wrong it just feels wrong the whole time do you know how he got that cast as i that? actually don't know the story he now. went he found out from his agent or somebody that the person that was like the director or producer of this new bond movie was getting his hair cut 
at a certain like barber shop and he was like go in there and tell them you want a haircut to look like james bond and he went in there and he's like make my haircut look like james bond and then at the end of the haircut they swiveled him around and the director or producer or whoever was like you should be cast as the new james bond and so fucking hokey and stupid i mean really that yeah sounds like, that, that alone sounds like some form of like 80s movie, montage. 80, it sounds like something in a montage. That sounds like a movie yeah. only Walking bad enough that they would actually. <laughs> right. It sounds like a movie only bad enough that they would actually cast George Lazenby to play himself. <laughs> right, right. I went through <laughs> and I was watching all the Bond movies and then I quit when I got to finish on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Right. I was like, I, was like, I can't. This, these are, you know. And I mean, and I've heard Roger Moore is terrible, like kind of a bad actor. In the movies, and okay, it's really his, campy and hokey, but he's yeah, supposed but, to be campy. But that's the greatness of the 80s Roger Moore Bond movies. It's like, ma'am, you got like Duran Duran and Wings doing the theme songs now in the 80s, and you got like jetpacks and All right. you know, rocket I monsters will say, and, and wild shit. I'm not a very big Duran Duran fan, but their Bond song oh, is so, so good. good. It's so good. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Something about having. A musician do a Bond song. Well, that's a big thing. It, it really is brings out. Like Chris, uh, like all the modern Daniel Craig Bonds, like uh, Chris Cornell's Bond song. Oh, yeah. Was that Quantum of Solace or Casino Royale? I think it was Quantum of Solace. That was a really good one. Uh, I don't even like Adele, but Adele's song yeah, for solid. Skyfall was yeah. it? Yeah, that was fucking great. Skyfall was a really good one. And I was going to say, it, really good I one. enjoyed Bond Billie Skyfall. Eilish's uh, mm-hmm. song for uh, Bond song. Mm-hmm. She did a great job. Mm hmm. I haven't heard that one. Oh. So I think it's like, what, Too Young to Die? Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Some shit like that. That's the new one, right? Yeah. Like, I hear it on the radio sometimes at work and shit, so. Yeah. Not, not I'm a, terrible. I'm a 90s baby, so I'm really partial to Pierce Brosnan. Well, I like Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. And, and Daniel right? Craig era. Yeah. I mean, Never Say Die is my favorite. That's a fucking... Right? I haven't seen that one. I mean, we, we all grew up playing a fucking GoldenEye and shit. Yeah. So I, we, I love we, you GoldenEye. Know, Brosnan. I thought, I thought GoldenEye was great. Pierce is the guy. Like, that's, that's who I... Also, being a 90s baby, I grew up on Pierce, man. Like... World is not enough. Like, all the boss Tomorrow Never Brosnan. Dies. Oh, fuck uh, yes. Holla Burr. That's such... Yeah. Anyway. Love the 90s bonds. I, I was really impressed with Casino Calibre. Royale. I thought that mm-hmm. was really good. Oh, the Daniel oh, yeah. Craig is the Daniel Craig era Bond is by far probably. And I mean, I, like I didn't I didn't like Quantum it's of just Solace. Like the slickest. It's just I didn't so, like oh, Quantum man. of Solace. That was so good. Well, like, the fucking villain Mads uh, Meek Mikkelsen. Yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, watching the name here. Such a great villain. He plays such a good like antihero, and he plays such an even better villain. You want a good fucking villain? Get him to do it. He will fucking scare you. It's great. And I mean the, you know, nothing. Nothing beats the torture scene where he's, you know, got him strapped <laughs> naked. Oh, that was that was in Casino Royale. Yeah. And oh, uh, that, oh I, still, I get I get the two. Th- confused, those those but two still, are like, pretty close connected, though. I think they're yeah. supposed to. But but still, like that is still. Yeah. And he's he's making you know testicle jokes while he's being tortured to death. Oh it's yeah, great. No, it's I, great. I thought I I think he's great. Um, like every every actor kind of has their own yeah thing they bring thing to they it. bring to it they they uh, what's what's the word like? they help like, frame for certain aspects of Bond you know you got the playboy you got the man of mystery you know notorious spy like right. they, they, Daniel Craig he's a fucking human weapon man right like, yeah he, yeah. Well, yeah, like Daniel, yeah, that, that's a perfect way to describe it. Like, Daniel Craig is like the human weapon bond. Pierce Brosnan is like, Pierce Brosnan era was like everything else in the 90s. It was kind of sleek and like, right, you little, know, like. A little campy, but just campy a enough. A little campy, but also like, sort of, you know, like, like, like it was like a luxury car, you know what I mean? Right, just like yeah. the ones that he drives. And Roger Moore, it's, you know, it's gadgets and it's secret agent shit. And Sean oh, yeah. Connery, it's sex appeal. And then, well, the thing that I know, really respect about Roger Lazenby. Moore. Well, well, first of all, Rick I want Connery, to go back though. to my original point of you know rewatching this, and George Lazenby just looks out of place, and it looks yeah. and feels wrong. What 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 struck it for me is just like looking at scenes where Lazenby is not speaking, where he it's just his face. He looks. Um, I know he's Australian. He looks American. And that really fucking throws it off for me. You know, Sean right. Connery, Scottish, but still, like, yeah. you buy it. 
Roger Moore, he's British. He looks and sounds British. Yeah. You know, Daniel Craig, Pierce Brosnan, those are yeah. Brits. I see Lazenby's face, and like I can almost imagine like a Hank Hill draw coming out of him. Right. Just doesn't look quite right. I just get a howdy from him, and I'll make my day. <laughs> <laughs> can Can we have footage of someone Southern like Matthew McConaughey doing a screen test, like audition? Is to Matthew be James McConaughey Bond? the first thing we think of? Is- when we think of Southern? Uh, think, thinking of someone that would do a charming but bad job is the first one I think of. Could you imagine? Yeah. Charming, yeah. charming but bad is exactly how I think of Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Dallas Buyers Club? That was a, that was a fantastic really movie. That. No, he was really good in that. Me and my dad went to see that. It's it's fucking weirdest movie I've seen him in, though. That open. Killer Joe movie was fucking wild. Never saw it. Uh, fucking wild. What was it called? Killer Joe. I want to see that. It's fucking wild. I heard he was in a movie called Mud that was really good. Also kind of wild, but... Still pretty good. Still pretty good. So, so, anyway, yeah. so anyways, back to Bond stuff. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, Roger Moore, do you know why he quit being Bond? I assume uh, no. it was his age. Cause wasn't, he, wasn't he the oldest of all the Bonds? Yeah, I think so. I'll say yeah. He said that it made him uncomfortable that his romantic interests were so much younger than him and he said that it was uncomfortable and made him feel creepy mm. how young these women were and he said well he said these he said i'm old enough to be these women's fathers it's not okay for me to be you know this old and being the love interest with such young women and he's not comfortable with it kudos to him honestly Brownie fucking Brownie. Brownie for Brownie. that time wow. period yeah holy yeah. shit you, uh, I, I mean, well, I'm not not to judge Roger Moore or anything, just you know, based on you know the surface level knowledge I have of him and his films, I definitely would not expect that attitude from him. And you know, the late '80s, that's yeah, pretty progressive. Wow. No, I think that's really cool, and that's the main reason that even though I'd say I really have, I don't think I've sat through a whole Roger Moore. Well, it's interesting. Movie, I respect you, him. It's interesting you say that because now that I'm thinking about it, when you get to like the Pierce Brosnan era, which was right around the corner in the '90s, like you said, Holly Berry, like the Holly Berry love interest, that's a bit more, you know, Pierce Brosnan to Holly Berry. That's a bit more, you yeah. know, the Bond girls started becoming more like yeah. Bond women. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I I think you know, hey, if but that's you can, just interesting though. I never, I mean, I never really thought that like, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. That's just interesting. Think about how much money. Like, what else can you name Roger Moore from? Right, like, right. I don't know what else he's done. Him, but, him playing a, a Bond version of himself in fucking Cannonball Run. <laughs> I haven't seen Cannonball Run. Oh my god! No, I've seen it, but I haven't seen it since I was like eight, so I don't remember. Oh god! Oh, rewatch it as soon as you can. It's so somehow I've never seen Cannonball Run. I gotta get on that. Dom DeLuise. Holy and I, who shit. else is in it? Dom DeLuise, Burt Reynolds, Burt Reynolds uh, one of Burt Jackie, Reynolds mustache. One of Jackie Chan's very first American appearances in wow. a film. What? Um, I love Jackie Chan. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, isn't it about like a cross country race? So the Cannonball Run is a real thing, and it's yeah. a, it's an illegal race that goes from like Boston to L.A. You know, coast to coast. Boston. And uh, it, it's it's you know even though it's in a sort of an illicit you know underground street racing type thing, it also I think it somehow has something to do with like the record of coast to coast times. Yeah. So if you you know if you have the fastest time in the cannonball run you're also like inadvertently setting a, a coast to coast speed record so i mean it's it's the 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 movie is just fucking hilarious wasn't it based on those uh what the looney tunes those are like wacky racers yeah wasn't it like had something to do with based on like wacky racers i mean it's it's a the the movie similar. the movie yeah the movie is a similar concept has a very to like, wacky like racers. all of these that's larger why, than life characters well, and they're in a race and they're sabotaging yeah and, and that yeah. well that's that's why there's that's why jackie chan is in it it's jackie chan and another uh uh asian guy are like the japanese team and they're driving like a souped up like Toyota with like a computer in it and then uh, Farrah Fawcett and I can't remember the other actress Farrah Fawcett and another actress are uh, you know they're they're the they're the babes and they're in like skin tight suits and they're driving a Ferrari but one of the of course, be- one of, of the best scenes in the movie is when they get pulled over in the middle of butt fuck nowhere Nevada and you know Farrah Fawcett's driving she's like all right let me handle this and she unzips it and you know, she's pushing her, her tits up and the, the, the sheriff that comes up to the car is a female. She's like, do you know how fast you ladies were going? 
Like that's yeah, it's it's great. Okay, that great. makes me think real quick. How great of a band name would Tits Up be? For a <laughs> Is there not a band called Tits Up yet? I've I've always thought it would be great to see like an all female hardcore band called Heavy Flow. I've always wanted to see. That. <laughs> all right, I I want to start manage a technical death metal band all female and call it Blood Queef. <laughs> But have them be so have them be so talented that you just have to be like, I have to give it up. Blood Queef is fantastic. No. They're so good. <laughs> you know, it's it sort of reminds me conceptually, uh, it's very similar to like baby metal. Like, you know, on paper it's very easy to make fun of baby metal, but like, ah, that's some talent. They're legit. They're legit. That's Too some legit real to talent. Quit. I agree. But so I back to though. back to Bond. We digress. I mean, we've got like six questions to stretch over an hour, so there's going to be tangents. Well, then I, you know, when I was rewatching it this morning, I was also like, I was going through and making points I could bring up. And towards the end of it, I had like 20, 20, 30 points in my head to bring up. And I was like, this, did you might, not be, write them down? this might be too thorough. D- did you not write them down? No. You did, you did also <laughs> mention like how like you felt like the ending was at the first like the halfway through the movie, yeah, it's where yes. the ending actually starts. So this, yeah, so this this is a point I could bring up, Matt. Yeah, when when I first got here this afternoon, I was talking about it with Matt. Yeah, but that's another thing I felt like when I rewatched this movie is I should make more coffee. The, right? Yeah, start okay. start the coffee. Okay. The the ending doesn't feel like just like a regular ending where you know most movies maybe the the ending quote unquote starts 15 20 maybe even Thank half you. an hour out because uh-huh. you know oh they got to save the princess or they got to you know they got to drive the bus back or you know something yeah. whatever the plot device is the ending for this movie felt like a fucking sequence that starts about halfway through the movie yeah and then then goes on to about the last hour and a half of the movie because it's wild. Because it just seemed like I don't know movies. Movies where like someone gets captured or like goes undercover and then something happens and then he escapes, but they have to go back and rescue someone else or destroy it. That shit always seems so convoluted yeah. and just redundant to me. And like this the was. Rock? <laughs> but I absolutely love the film The Rock. I love that movie. But this is one of those movies, though, because he's at that that college or that allergy institute or whatever. You know, he's doing his fake genealogy research, banging the girls, you know, wearing a kilt. I mean, Australian in a kilt. Come on, that's weird. (laughs) Maybe they just had they wanted to do it because, like, you know, Connery. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well... Like he's, he's not Connor, he's his own bomb. And, you know, he, he finds out the stuff he needs to find out, but then, you know, they discover he's really 007. You know, they, they drug him and they put him under, you know, yeah. all, the, all the weird shit they're doing to the girls. And then, you know, he escapes and there's the big ski sequence. The first of many ski sequences. Oh. It's, like they, it's like they paid for, like, you know, footage on the mountain. Like, they got to use all that. <laughs> right. They got to they use that budget, you know? Like they shot all of this B-roll of mountains, and they're like, right. "Fuck, we gotta use this. We gotta use all this." <laughs> but it's you know, and he escapes, and then he finds his wife. But then the wife gets captured after they spend the night in that 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 farmhouse. And then he gets the wife's father, and they lead that little rebellion back to the college to destroy it. And then even then, it's still not quite fucking over. And there's another rescue and another escape sequence. And then it finally ends. It's like, but that wait, final there's more. Three minutes. Yeah. But wait, there's more. Like a th- three minutes. Yeah. Look, we were watching. Well, and then, like, and then even fucking ending. Like, and, well, not even that. You know, I was thinking of the ending. Ending where like, yeah, the bullet and the angles don't even match up. But there's right. But even <laughs> even <laughs> after all the dust is settled, there's still like a preliminary like 15 minutes of like, oh, everything is we're safe and we're married now. And oh well, yeah, we were like, we were rewatching the dust is the settled. Ending. You don't need to take 15 minutes of our time to tell us that everything's going back to normal. But like, come needed, on. But it felt, it minutes of the felt like 15 minutes. It was actually eight. We pulled it up on YouTube, but it felt like 15 okay. minutes. That, but that's it was my point. him buying the ring. Okay, we don't need to see that. It can, it can just cut through him at the wedding, but then he's like giving a wink to Miss Mrs. Money Penny, right. whatever, and then like, which okay, and that leads me to question: Is there is what what is up with the the sexual tension between Money Penny and Bond? She maybe she's a bit of a milf. Well, no, the question that I was wondering today, the question I was wondering today, 
does she have a crush on him and he's just um, flirting back just to be nice or do they both like like each other because like she always seems kind of like jealous anytime he's like well, dating somebody. Maybe it's not so much like you know she's no he she probably sees him a certain way and he might see her in a different way like you know Bond we don't, don't know too much about like I don't know Bond's like past and whatnot so like maybe he didn't have like I many, think like they figured. Maybe Caesar is more of like you know a motherly type figure. They're they're horny for each other, but their horny is not on the same frequency. Yeah, okay. And so they're and they're having like traction problems. You, you get yeah. what I'm? That's the best way that I can think to describe it. It's like the, 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 they're getting like the gear, feedback. The gears are there. Like you're, they're they're trying to they're trying to like you know get in place, but it's just it's not going to work. Right. Like know? one one gear set is in inches, and then the other's metric. Like yeah, it's, eh, we're not going to work. It's not going to work. But yeah, so even that crazy, but, well, not oh, even but, crazy. It was kind of like it was kind of like it just felt so drawn out. So drawn out. Like they could. Well, I mean, and then your point to your point to to add to that was it just feels like it feels like you know at that that halfway point where basically the you know it's the the ending of the movie starts for a good hour and a half it just it, it felt like they were you know they were writing it they're like gee what the fuck do we do what are we out of here like should we, like it's like oh let's do this ending no let's about, do this ending let's do all well, the endings how let's about while they're escaping ending. they drive into a fucking race in the swiss alps and do like three laps before they figure out how to escape <laughs> right that, that one okay that one that I think above anything else in this movie really got my fucking go. <laughs> she just barges into that race, you know, drives through the stands, probably harms, injures, or kills people breaking yeah. into that race. Does like three laps, and then she's like, "Oh, James, how do we get out of this race? Oh, James, how do we escape?" Like, <laughs> like, lady, you drove in, just drive the fuck out. Come it's like, on, it's like it was gonna, so irritating. It's like, where do I go? It's like you're in a fucking circle. Like, find. <laughs> Like, there's gonna be something. It's like you're you gonna drive through. There's only one way, way to go. Like remember how you found your way in? You go around the Burger King <laughs> and then you go back out the Burger King. Like so, <laughs> God, that drove me fucking apeshit. That sequence <laughs> went on way too long. But but you said that you were surprised that we thought this was the worst Bond movie. Yeah. Do you not think it's the worst Bond movie? You know, that's funny because uh, you know I was watching it, rewatching it this morning, and I you know. For all the criticisms we're going to lob at it today, I still thought, like, this is a lot better than I expected. Well, and I looked it up, too, on, on, uh, on, on like, Rotten Tomatoes uh, before I came over here, and I, yeah. was, I was really surprised. On Rotten Tomatoes, the critical percentage is 81, and the user percentage on the site is, like, 65. That averages about out to about a 75. That's a, that's a C plus. That's not bad. But I think that, I mean, grade. again, I... I'm a super huge Bond nerd. I'm yeah. just uh, things that I love. I just I love them. Like I'm trying to think of like another example of like a bad video game or a bad movie or something that is just objectively bad that I love and will defend. The Super Mario Brothers movie, objectively I terrible movie. I love it. I love it. I, I like Dennis Hopper in it. Yeah. Oh, Do so you think great. he was coked up in that movie because he seemed a little twitchy? No, Dennis Hopper was very straight and narrow kind of guy in those years, I think. Okay. I think he got all this hippie shit out of him by then. I watched almost anything with John Leguizamo. Yeah. Same. I love John Leguizamo. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. I can first definitely... Movie I saw him in his pest. That was yeah. good. Like, I guess, I guess, although I guess begrudgingly, I guess it does have to be labeled the worst Bond movie. What would you think is the worst Bond movie other than that? <sighs> I don't know, man. I like, mean, would, would you, would you want to say... Would you want to go by like eras? I don't would mean, you go like worst I, Connery, worst Moore, worst Brosnan? Would you like? Would that be easier for you? Because we could definitely tackle that. I don't, I don't know if I could. I, I don't know if I could. I'm gonna get so much shit for this. I'm sure. I mean, no disrespect for to the guy. I fucking love Sean Connery. He was an amazing actor. I loved like everything he did. Some of those first generation yeah. original Sean Connery era bonds. Some of those I think are a lot fucking cheesier than we remember and our, oh, yeah. and our nostalgia is sort of clouding that. And <sighs> for a lot of the plot holes and yeah, the movie was like what two and a half, three hours definitely felt like it dragged on. I don't know. I, I have a if, if we're if, gonna if talk I have about to say this is the worst Bond movie, I'm saying it like very begrudgingly. 
Yeah. If, if we're gonna talk about Connery, like Moonraker, come on, come, like just on a just if on we're the gonna, premise, like that that one was a little far fetched. If we're gonna cheesy, talk about Connery, it? are we gonna yeah. bring up the fact? I mean, that, Moonraker was the one that almost didn't get made. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it. There you go. I, I saw. Uh, so TBS every like New Year's Eve would have Bond marathons, yeah. and I like saw bits and pieces of other ones. Then I started going through and rewatching them. But the thing is, is like sometimes I don't have the best attention span, and sometimes yeah. sometimes they get really technical and political with stuff, and I'm just like I don't even know who they're going after. Oh man, like you know I love Bond, but I had to watch. I I didn't get to see Spectre in theaters, so I guess I probably would have paid more attention if I did. But I bought it on DVD I later. I need to see Spectre. And I had yeah. to watch. Spectre on my own personal DVD copy four times before I stopped falling asleep from smoking yeah. too much pot watching it. Yeah. So I understand. I can let you borrow it. I have a copy of it. I bought it when it came. Well, it was like on sale when it came out. And I bought right. it. It's look. It's it's got Javier Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem. Bardem. I think I'm pretty sure he's in it. Yeah. Uh, Christoph Waltz is in it. Oh, it's a great cast. It's a great movie. Uh, eh. I didn't. I didn't really care for it. I would say that. It was a little. Um, I think Skyfall is definitely the best of the Daniel Craig ones. Skyfall, yeah. Skyfall was I, I think amazing. Skyfall and uh, Casino Royale, and I'd probably put Skyfall a little bit higher than Casino Royale, but like real close. Yeah, I saw then, Skyfall when it was in theaters. I saw yeah. that in theaters five fucking times. No shit. No, I shit. loved it. I fucking loved it. I don't think I've seen a movie in a the theater that many times. If I mean, if if did you go by yourself? Sometimes, uh, the first time I think me and my dad went to see it, because my dad's always been a bit of a Bond fan, I think yeah. that's where I picked it up. You know, me and my dad went to see it, my dad was blown away, I was blown away. Oh yeah, uh, I had no idea, you know, it was it was a great film. I had no my idea. my buddy Eric went to see it one time because he had just dropped acid, and he was like, oh man, let's go see Skyfall. I was like, okay, uh -huh. <laughs> it'd be funny, to watch me, it'd be funny for me to watch you freak out. And then I think like the other three times were just like, yeah, I just liked it so much, I just wanted to see it. Yeah, that's really cool. Also, no, I, I mean, I'm a nerd though, and like, yeah. I don't know, other people have hobbies. I just like watching movies and playing Nintendo. No, that's cool. <laughs> like, um, so if we're gonna bring up Connery, you know, rest in peace. We should also. It's not hero worship. Are we gonna talk at all about how like after he died, everyone's like, well, he was pro beating women. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, shit. I was making those jokes the day yeah. he died. Like again, like I like him, I respect him, but I'm, I don't have any like. As a person, I, I can't. Any, yeah. Did Did you like see like? Because when he died, people were like, "Don't forget this," and they were posting clips of him being interviewed in the eighties on TV, and he's like, "Well, you know." Sometimes you have to smack a bitch. Yeah. Like, quote unquote. In, right? in, in like eighties talk, and I'm just like, "Oh no." Yeah. Uh, Fuck, dude! Really, I can't. He he was my favorite Bond, and I just right. I, I have that attached to it now. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, and, and like, even know? on that, like finding out, like, like I love Jackie Chan and all that, but like finding out he's like super like pro cop and shit. I'm just like, <sighs> well, I, well, I guess the other thing to Sean Connery's credit, although I guess you know women beating goes across the political spectrum. I remember reading somewhere he was a big supporter of the Scottish Socialist Party. So I don't know anything about that. Buys him a little brownie points. Well, it's the Socialist Party, and yeah, I'm, yeah, know, flaming left wing idiot. So I'm like, oh, cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I read a whole article on how uh, again the misogyny goes. What what's his face from Wham? George Michael. Yeah, George Michael is his show name. His real name is very Greek, and he was a member of like the, the Greek Parliament. No, he was a member of like the 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 yeah. social national socialist like or communist party. He his if you look up national socialist would be well Nazi. No, no, yeah. there there's he he's a card carrying communist. That's interesting. But it's under his like George Georgiakula whatever Care, the careless whispers. Wh of hold, a on, communist. hold on, hold on. No, he's Michael Cleese. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got it. He's his real name is very Greek, but him and his father both like card carrying communists. And after he died, it came forward that he was like a card carrying communist. But it also came forward that he had donated lots of money to like out of work miners and like striking wow. workers. So, uh, uh, sort of, sort of similar thing with the uh, actor. 
uh, Anthony Hopkins. He was raised by two card-carrying members of the British Communist Party. Uh, he said he often, you know, identified or agreed with socialist uh, arguments, and he was a, a lifelong avowed atheist. Uh, wow. General Secretary of the Communist Party of Britain says the late singer George Michael was formerly a member of the Young Communist League. Wow. Oh, I mean, I, you know, I... Wham is, again, Wham is one of those things that's pretty easy to point and make fun of, but I like Wham. Careless Whisper's a fucking jam. Fucking Bob, dude. Fucking straight up banger. And, like, honestly, this just makes me like him more. This, that's pretty fucking great. George fucking I Michael. did not realize George Michael was, like, Oh, under his actor. real name, Georgios Kyriakos Panayutu. Fabio. No, that's George Michael's I, real I name. I know. Fuck it. How do you pronounce that? Uh, let me give it a go. Let me give it a whirl. But him and his father were both like oh, communists. Damn, that's really cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, and he was uh, uh, raising money and donating money to uh, striking coal miners. So this doesn't have this doesn't have anything to do with with Wham or George Michael, but it has. I guess some, a little bit to do with our original topic. Yeah, <laughs> we can get back to it. We have half hour, you know. No, so, but this is this is another yeah. another point I, I, I yeah. had on my, my my imaginary list, and I guess maybe part of this is probably just due to technical limitations. I, I can't remember was was this was Honor Magic Secret Service still sixties or did this was this the seventies by now? Uh, I'll look it up. Pretty, should have been the seventies. Either way, either way, you know, I'm sure there's you know still technical limitations. But it seemed to me that like... Every, 1969. 69, okay. That's kind of what I thought. So it seemed to me that like every action sequence in this film was like shot at regular speed, but then sped up. Because like the, you know, the movie opens with that sort of car chase, you know, Bond's lighting the cigarette in his car and that other car's following behind him. Like, I don't know. I've watched a lot of, lot of fucking movies in my time. I, I know for a fact I can spot this trick or, you know, spot when something is sped up. It seemed to me that, like, every action sequence, maybe except for that that race in the Alps at the end, you know, the one where yeah. they break into it and they do a few laps, maybe with the exception of that race, it seems like every other action sequence, every car chase, every fight, the ski sequences, everything seemed like it was shot at regular speed and then sped up. I, I didn't notice that. I just remember it being an unenjoyable movie to me, um... And I'm, I'm curious now that we got on the topic, though, and I, I got to go back to of the era. Um, what is your least favorite of each? Um, so Sean Connery, um, I think the first Bond movie, what was it Dr. No? Mm -hmm. I didn't really care for that. Yeah. Now, when it comes to Bond, slow start. I absolutely love Goldfinger Classic. and From Russia with Love. Classic. Um, no, no, no. Uh, That's, a, yeah. I don't remember that one as much, but I, uh, no, my top three Connery would be Goldfinger, um, Diamonds Are Forever, and probably From Russia With Love. I think those three were great, but yeah. Doctor No, I thought took a while to get anywhere. They were finding a footing. Right. Well, it's the first. It's the first. Yeah. First, first movies I, in the series. I think aren't, aren't always. I the think best. Thunderball. I didn't care for either. I would agree. Yeah. I would say, and that there we go. There we fucking go. That is the movie that makes me question, like, really, Your Majesty's Secret Service okay, but is what Connor, the fans consider the worst? Okay. Well, well, Connery was getting tired of being Bond. But if you right. keep in mind, in my opinion, I would rather watch Connery in a bad Bond movie than watch Lazenby in an arguably decent film. That's fair enough. Okay. First off, yeah, like, like ladies and I don't think it was a problem here. I think it was mostly like the the, the script the and how much how much they were how much they're trying to fit into one movie. They're trying to do they're trying to do too much in this movie. Way too. I much. don't think he fits the the role for Bond. I, I think that it was bad casting. He might have been fine in other movies, but I just don't think he was a good Bond. He would be great in like you know any of the dozen like Bond. Bond type ripoffs that you know. Yes, I can't, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Yeah, like Put him in Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, not maybe not exactly like Jason Bourne, but something adjacent. You know what I mean? Another At like Jason spy Bourne. type. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Ha. But you know, a spy type thriller. You know what I mean? In, yeah. But not maybe not 
the, you know, the 007. I understand why he was only in one. But a lot of people, if you Google, like, on, go on Reddit and talk about, like, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, everyone's like, oh, my God, there's so many reasons why this was... That, that is a fan, like, agreed worst Bond movie. Interesting. That, that is a big, like... You know what I will say? I even though. read a book where a guy was... It was a memoir a guy wrote about uh, his dad was rich, but, like, the young kid was, like, trying to rebel against his, like, unloving father by being a punk. Like, I don't remember what the book was called, but he was, like, on a date and trying to, like, hook up with George Lazenby's daughter. And then, like... But he was just like, yeah... I didn't end up sleeping with her, but I mean, come on, her dad was the worst Bond ever. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Like, a Bond there's, is a Bond. There, there's a lot of jokes about George Lazenby being like the worst, but yeah. uh, well, he only did one. Yeah, Roger Moore, and he also we're bringing up like how everything, a lot of things he said just sounded like quippy. Yeah. Yes, that one liners. Was, that was of, the uh, that was the other thing. But that, Roger Moore didn't he have a lot of quips like that? Yeah. How was it okay for Roger Moore, but not okay for George? Lazenby? May, may, you know, maybe I need to go back this and rewatch delivery, those. Maybe. You know, maybe maybe this is all fresh in my mind because I just watched this movie this morning to yeah. prepare for the podcast. But you know, Roger Moore, Sean Connery, Pierce Brosnan, Daniel Craig. In my memory, in my mind, those films all seem to have a lot more like genuine dialogue. Her, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, it seriously felt like every time Bond opens his mouth, not the other characters, just Bond in particular, every time he opens his mouth, yeah, it's a quip or it's a one-liner or it's, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, but everyone else that played Bond reinvented Bond their own way. And exactly. he did not. No. He... Okay, sorry, we had uh, someone coming home. So, all right, uh, I don't know enough about the Roger Moore films to say my least favorite. I will say uh, I don't think I've seen any of the Timothy Dalton movies either, but I hear he was okay. Oh, shit, I completely forgot about the Timothy Dalton bonds. And then uh, I'd say out of the Pierce Brosnan ones that I didn't like, uh, I... I only saw uh, Goldeneye, and then what was the one with Holly Berry? The world is not enough. Tomorrow. Tomorrow never dies. Tomorrow never dies. Tomorrow never dies. I only yeah. saw Goldeneye and Tomorrow never dies. Tomorrow never dies was okay. I thought Goldeneye was superior. Out of the Daniel Craig stuff, uh, I didn't like Quantum of Solace. I thought it fell flat. But Dalton only had two bonds: Living Daylights and License to Kill. He was only in two. Oh. Yeah. That's right. Although I will say Living Daylights and License to Kill are pretty good Bond movies. <sighs> huh. I haven't seen those. Because I, I was trying to go chronological. Um, yeah, he would he would have been right. I think he would have been right after... More. Um, yeah, he would have been right after More. Right he was between Brosnan. More and Brosnan, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Bros- the 90s with Brosnan and stuff those are uh, really good yeah, how do you feel about the oh the rumor that the reason that they quit casting Brosnan was because he was in the closet and it was starting to come out that he was gay and the people behind Bond were like, oh no, we can't have a gay Bond. I don't remember any of that. You haven't heard any of that controversy? No, that's ridiculous. There's a there's a controversy that Pierce Brosnan is just very private with his like personal life, but that you know. That's his right. Yeah, apparently the rumor is that one of the theories is that Pierce Brosnan's gay and it was starting to kind of, you know, he wanted to be more open about it and be progressive, but the people were just like, well, we don't want you to tarnish Bond. And then my brain, I'm just like, okay, so a woman beater's fine, but someone being gay isn't okay for Bond. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Well, it's it was like the backlash from uh, a couple years ago when they were saying, you know, oh, what if we cast a, a black Bond or a female Bond? I thought, yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. They're, they're, they're talking about uh, Idris Elba? Yeah. That that I think so he would have been, been a fine Bond. I don't know so much good. about him, Idris but he would have been fine. Idris Elba would be an amazing fucking amazing Bond. Bond. He's like, I mean... For fuck's, and he's British. I mean, for Isn't fuck, he? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, for saying, fuck's sakes, just look at the guy. He's basically a black Daniel Craig. Are right? Are you me? saying that he you would prefer drips. to have? Um, you'd be more comfortable with a black British Bond 
than a white American Bond. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want. I don't. I don't want a white American Bond. Well, I, I mean, a white American Bond. Fair you know, like it, some other you know, rewind the tape twenty minutes. What was one of my criticisms of Lazenby? Is he, he too looks, American? He looks like a fucking American. I don't know how else to like. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like one of us, not a Brit. Also, fair enough. A, a fun fact I realized: uh, who is it? Ian, so Ian Fleming. Mm-hmm. Uh, believe he is. He, I believe he's like related or good friends with uh, fucking Christopher Lee. Interesting. Sir Christopher Lee was kind of the inspiration for Ian Fleming's novels because of like all the all the time he spent in this in the Secret Service in the military. Yeah. Holy shit! I didn't know that. Oh yeah, well, Chris, Sir Christopher fuck? Lee's a badass. I could go on a tangent about how fucking badass. Well, Sir Christopher I mean, Lee was in the. Well, I already knew Christopher Lee was a bit of a badass. Hold on. Uh, why don't you tell him the story? You know the story about how Christopher Lee was in one of the Tolkien movies. Yeah, he was in Lord. Of the, he was he was Saruman, and yeah. he, he explained to Peter Jackson. Like when uh, Frodo got stabbed in the, on the mountaintop, he got stabbed by that Nazgul blade, and like he explained to uh, Peter Jackson, like the sound a man makes when he is stabbed. Yeah, he's like, that doesn't sound like someone being stabbed. I was in the military. I can tell you what it sounds like. The noises one makes when they get stabbed in the back, and I'm like, that's amazing. Right. It's so fucking cool. It's like, like, so, I fucking, love, I love, love Christopher Lee. He plays such great villains. That's interesting. And, oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, so he, Sir Christopher Lee was an uh, inspiration for like the Ian, Ian Fleming's novels. Yeah. So, okay, Ben, um, what was your least favorite Roger Moore movie? Moonraker? Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to say hands down. Okay. Th- that one just seemed like... <sighs> I, I mean, I can't think of anything else to describe it other than that one just seems to me like they were just jumping the fucking shark on that one. It just seemed just a little too out there for Bond. I don't know. I can't What's your call a good Roger Moore movie? And to be honest, yeah. Well, it it, it was campy for camp's sake, which is okay. Um, right. I mean, that was I mean that was the Roger era. That was the Roger Moore era of Bond. Was it was it was campy as yeah, fuck. campy gadgets, but, all, all, yeah, all yeah. Stuff was it, it, it was more. It was more. It went from more serious spy to more like tongue in cheek. Right. Like, but they were they were. Uh, you know, if nothing else, the those movies were fun. Yeah. But like Moonraker, to me, couldn't even pull that off. It was just. What, what was the one that Christopher Walken played the villain? Was that Man with the Golden Gun? Uh, no, that was. And also, like in that in that time, wasn't like I, I, they have to they have they have a, you have to change with the times. Like there are yeah. there are, there are other. That things was a out view there. to a kill. That was, that's one of the. I okay. I would say that one is. I liked him. I remember that scene where you to a kill is, is one of the best of all the. Bombs. They're That's holding on one. to those. They're doing the competitive holding on to like the shock paddles. Yeah. And then like it was like a video game he designed and it electrocutes you if you're losing. Like that was cool. That was a good. What scene. was the one that had the guy with the like, those steel teeth or whatever? Oh, that was the guy from uh, Happy Gilmore. The guy at the end. Yeah. Yeah, there was a big Happy Gilmore fan. Had that plate in his head. Yeah. The guy. The guy's name was Jaws. Yeah. That was it. That was wild. But, so, um, since we have, like, you know, about 20 minutes left, let's mow through some more of these questions. Um, should Bond ever get married? Womanizer or family man? Well, that was a pretty ridiculous plot point. That was, yeah. Well, like, he, he shouldn't get married because Bond, while as cool as Bond is, James Bond will always be a bit of a tragedy. That's yeah. part of the character of James Bond. Yeah, like, fair. Like even in, even in Casino Royale and or was it Casino Royale? Quantum Solace. Quantum of Solace at the end, right? Like, yes. Like again, like he always somehow loses the girl that he gets to attach to. Which which comedian? I can't remember which comedian it was. It was Chris Rock or someone. But they were like, you know, he's got this superpower. Every every woman he sticks his dick into, she's gonna die. He's like, right. If I had if I had a if I it, had it's, a, it's tragedy. It's it's, it's Macbethian. Like yeah, he's like if I had a Nostradamus dick like that, I'd keep it away from people. Right. So <laughs> God, like. What comedian? Does and that? so the thing I would say is I would agree with that. When, but yes, it's very like classic Shakespearean tragedy. Yeah, you have. Have you seen the uh, oh, the Mission Impossible movies? Have you like actually gone through and watched like all of them? I remember a couple of them. The first one I saw was Mission Impossible too, because I I, I, was, uh, I was younger. Yeah, I mean I was a '90s baby. I remember the first, the first one, one was good, and escape. then like you can't be a '90s baby. The like fourth, fifth, and sixth ones the, were good. I think like two and three were bad. Cruise. But yeah, oh, two well, and three were bad. Like, and there's there's so many spy movies out there, and that's also I feel like classic. Like, like Roger, dangling. 
yeah, like Roger Moore, Roger Moore era had to compete with a lot of other things. Like remember, like Get Smart was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like a lot of some of the. Well, plus it was. I mean, comedy was a thing. You know, she campiness. Like, the Roger Moore movies. That was the eighties. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, uh, even look at like a comedy movie like Weird Science. Like yeah. all the prop shit, all the yeah. special effects shit oh, yeah. going on in a fucking John Hughes movie. Yeah, like yeah, you got it. You gotta adapt. You gotta, you gotta adapt. You gotta have Christopher Walken on the fucking Eiffel Tower, you know, with rocket launchers and jetpacks and shit. Yeah. And that's and that's why the eighties bonds are so cheesy, but they're so good. It's good cheese. Good cheese. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like good high quality French cheese. It's a fine breed. So, right? It's I, it smells funny, but it tastes great, you know? <laughs> in in the later uh, Mission Impossible movies, uh, Tom Cruise's character has to like hypnotized, have have the woman he loves hypnotized and, like, given a new identity so mm-hmm. she, like... So so people that want to come after him don't come after her. And right. I think that's why Bond should stay single, is because we don't want to have the whole, oh, I'm going to let them destroy this whole city so I can save my... You know, I, I'm sick of that trope of... You know, the other, same with Superman 1. Yeah. You know, well, but the other, we'll get the, to that in another the other, episode. The other thing, too, about Bond being married, um, one of you guys made the point... You know, but this was more so to the point of, you know, whether Miss Money, Penny, and Bond had anything yeah, yeah. going on. But to that same point, though, at the end of the movie, yeah, they're getting married, and he's literally winking at Miss Money Perry, yeah. Money Penny, while he's getting married. And that, you know, like, if he's if there's going to be infidelity, if he's going to fuck around and just be James Bond anyway, what's the goddamn I, point? I think, I think that was him just being like, okay, I'm growing up and I'm moving on. I'm throwing you my hat and I'm leaving. But do you get the point I'm making, though? Yeah. Like, he's... Because he's, he to be, me, a wink is a wink. And it just, I... Again, they set up the whole thing of, oh, you must marry my daughter. But then he goes to the Swiss Alps and he fucks two girls at that allergy institute yeah. anyway. Allergy yeah. like, institute. What, well, what right. the fuck else know. was it? I don't fucking know. That, that, <laughs> that, again, I mean, I don't mean to poke so many small, you know, nitpicky holes. But, again, that also, to me, is just so just conceptually just like, oh, it's... It's it's nestled up in the Swiss Alps. Only you can only get to it from helicopter, but they'll take patients from around the world for yeah. their various allergies. Like what? You guys couldn't put that on the ground, like in the middle of Bern, Switzerland, right? In in the city. Why? Like, I don't. It was. Why is it going to be so inaccessible? Right. So. Um, oh, so we can have three ski sequences, yeah. a helicopter sequence. You, you, they, you, you pay for all the, you pay for all that. You gotta use all those scenes. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. you gotta make your budget. No, I hear you. Okay, that was another thing. That that was another point that I wanted to 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 bring up. The 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 ski chase. He's yeah. skiing. He's skiing. He trips. One of the boots breaks. He gets back the fuck up and skis down the mountain on one, one ski, ski with his knee like. You know, Domingoing, like yeah. Fucking... What the fuck was that? Like that, that right there is wonder... proof that like they seriously had no idea what they were doing or how to end the movie. It's like they're writing it as they're going along, and like I looked it up, like the the director for this, he was like a editor director and whatnot on like a few other Bond movies, but he was like this that this was his first time actually like directing directing in this. And, and Bond, and I think that's the only one. I checked on the little IMDb and uh, Wikipedia. Like, there's only so much you can do with that plot, and I don't blame Lazenby at all. Like, he tried to oh, he tried right. to be a bit of a charis- you know, a, a charismatic, right? Kind of like a uh, charming, kind of kind of sexy, somehow look American, even though you're Australian, kind right. of like kind of guy, yeah. Uh, and like. Yeah, There's not a, so much you can do with it. Not a bad actor, but I agree. Like if if someone hands you this script and you're like, "All right, George, you got to be the next." Uh, you got to be the okay. Next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The okay. 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 Well, let's try. Right. Let's let's <laughs> take like Al Pacino, who's a fantastic actor. Yes. He's a fantastic actor, but he wouldn't be a good Bond. No, fuck no. Uh-huh. Okay. He'd be a horrible Bond. Uh-huh. I'd be a good Bond villain, possibly. Yeah. Yes. But but yes. what I'm saying is. I think Lazenby was a bad choice for Bond. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because he's a good actor or a bad actor. He's just some people are good actors but shouldn't be Bond. He right. didn't reinvent himself at all. Right. Like it, it was it was a bad casting no, Bond choice. Bond takes like he was in my opinion the worst Bond. Bond takes like a a certain type of actor. And like yeah, again, like the, each Bond has their own flavor, but like 
again, with the exception of Lazenby, even Timothy Dalton, who only did two movies, like he is still like a decent bomb. Yeah. License to Kill is still what, what I would. What, I would if, what if in a few years we have Daniel Radcliffe as Bond? You know what? I wouldn't. Be the Boy to Live is now the fucking Man of Mystery. I wouldn't be against it. Right? I, He's done a lot. Just as long as J.K. Rowling. Just as long as J.K. Rowling. Just as long as J.K. Rowling doesn't fucking try to write it, because I'm done with anything and everything that she wants to do. I'm over it. She's a piece of shit. Piece of shit. Fuck it's her. Like, it's like in ten years when Daniel Radcliffe is like almost in his forties, though, yeah. like that would not be a bad choice for a Bond. Right. We decided to take a bathroom break because we are loaded up with coffee. So and off brand Bailey's, <laughs> off brand Bailey's. Cause... But uh, in that time, though, um, Matt watched the skiing scene from on our Majesty's Secret Service, right? And, and I just trying to get a refresher on that. Like, there's 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 a lot going on. There's a lot going on, but also like there's not a lot actually happening right. it was it was at night there's, there's, there's a lot of it's good, it's good to like sit there it's more of a popcorn scene like oh, right. all right i'll watch this you could you could say there's a lot of visual information yeah but there's there's nothing that's important to anything that but, goes on like you're saying like kudos, kudos to the kudos to the guy for skiing with one leg that's, that's i have a ball, question right? <laughs> hold on I have a question that, you know, because Ben was mentioning it was the 80s. They wanted the movies to be cheesy. Do you think because in the 80s there was so much like, oh, my God, we're going to go to the movie theater and make out or, or put my dick through the popcorn bucket. Do you think they were like, well, they're not really going to be watching the movie anyways. Let's put in long scenes for people to make out during, you know? Yeah. Like, and, and like every, every, every movie doesn't have to be like you know, groundbreaking and whatnot. Yeah, they're they're a good popcorn flicks. Yeah. Like you got you gotta have you know popcorn flicks. You gotta have filler moments. And if, but I feel like this movie, like it was could have stand out better. There's like a difference between like there's, and I'm pretty sure I used this as an example in one of the past episodes we were talking about. But like, there's just there's a good way to make something about nothing. And then there's a really fucked up, like, bad way to make something about nothing. Like, again, example, Seinfeld and Napoleon Dynamite are two yeah. pieces of media that people famously say, you know, quote-unquote, have no plot or are about nothing. Yeah. But they're full of, you know, slice-of-life shit. Everything people can, yeah. people can relate to. They're funny. They're wholesome. Not wholesome, maybe, but, like, heartfelt. Like... And then conversely, when something is about nothing but it's bad, that generally means that, like, I mean, obviously, On Her Majesty's Secret Service isn't about nothing. It has a plot. It ha you know, it's based on an Ian Fleming novel. Did you but, read any but of the books? Because I tried, and I didn't like them. They're very I've, I've, dry. Yes, I've never read, but I love the movies. Yeah. But, but like, if, if, if you're making a piece of media that's, that's about nothing and it's bad... It probably wasn't meant to be about nothing. Like you get the point I'm yeah. making. Like there is substance in this film, but where? Yeah. Where is it? It's it's uh it, like just like Jeb Bush, this film is a mess. <laughs> I like Marco, I like Ted, but on Her Majesty's Secret Service is a mess. Yeah. Yep. So do you think that out of all the Bond movies, this one had the worst ending out of the Bond movies? Because I think it does. So yeah, the actual ending. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Yeah. Like you it's have you so have the long drawn out wedding. No, they're she's just so, sleeping. They're so happy. They have the cliche, which no cliches aren't terrible, but this time it's like, oh, you gave me everything. You gave me a future. Blah blah blah. Or, I know three boys, three girls. That's oh, a good start. It's a good yeah. start. I love you. Oh. It's like, oh, we have all the time in the world. It's like, oh yeah. And then like, uh, let me like pull over on the side of the road to get these flowers off the car. Why'd you do that? Just leave them, leave them on there. Like, right. you, you just got fucking married. Were Were they what, gonna this have car? Be... Teenagers makes fun of you, and you're right. you're so butt hurt, Mr. Like, James Bond. These teenagers, all right. We do look like an advertisement. Emotionally, for oh, emotionally oh. unstable. James were they gonna Bond have him here? be? Right. Were they gonna have him be James Bond, the Family Man? Sorry, I'm late for dinner, honey. I had a coup in Nicaragua. I had to stage. <laughs> you know. Sorry, honey. I had to snap the spines of five men on the way home. <laughs> just comes home, you know, in 
everyone else up to his neck. Well, you know, just I can imagine him human saying, "Human murder machine." I can imagine James Bond kissing his baby son at bed at night. <laughs> I love you, my child. These are the same hands I murdered five men with today. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, he's he's like, I murdered it, these men hours ago, but it took me two hours to come up with the perfect pun, and I just had to. I I, right. I, have, I, I have a humor attached OCD where if I murder someone in order for nothing bad to happen to me, I have to make a really bad joke. <laughs> right, like. Maybe that's part of it, you know. Us as humans, you know, when we have we take our trauma and we use it for a comedy, like a lot of comedians and whatnot. Yeah. You know, they have we everyone has like their little issues and whatnot that help make them quote unquote funny. Do you know so what one of the James big is so one of the big defenses funny. for the movie was? It was really close to the book. It was really it was out of all the Bond movies, it was the closest to the source material, and that's what a lot really? of people defend it as. Which is cool, but... And I would say Ian Fleming is not as great of a novelist as... Do you know why they say, based on this book, it's always very, very, very loosely based. Based on the character, based on the theme. Based on they the taken. That, yeah. They might have taken... Octopussy is about an octopus. Right. The short story. Right. It was stupid, I read it. Right. Right. It's but, not, but you have to adapt it to make an actual film. Like you got to fill two hours. Oh yeah, this isn't no. something like someone's gonna casually read, you know, in their downtime at work and whatnot. This is a fucking Bond film. You got to make a Bond film out of these Bond books. Yeah, you know, there was there was another point that that one of you had made very early on in this episode, and and, and I can't remember what it was. But my counterpoint was was something along the lines of you know. When you have, like, what are they up to? Like, 25 Bond movies or something? Like, when you have that many movies, like, there's gonna be a low point. You know, like, everyone considers, like, you know, like, The Simpsons. You know, everyone's like, oh, like, seasons one through seven are great. And it dips in the teens. Oh, but it comes back in the, you know. Skyler like, says he won't watch any Simpsons after season ten. And I'm like, it's all but, good. But, I mean, you get the point I'm making, though, right? Like, in a series that stretches, you know, 60 years at this point, like, yeah. there's gonna be an inevitable low point. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I don't know. Which like, I'd say, if, if I would say the low point for Bond has come and gone. And, I mean, I, I think Bond's better than ever. Again. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Roger Moore... It was cheesy. It was super 80s. That was really cool. They made it a little bit more serious with Brosnan in the 90s. And super then, serious with Craig. Yeah, but it, at the same time, that with, with the Daniel Craig Bonds, like, again, with the torture scene when he's making testicle jokes, like, there's still, like, a little bit of the Roger Moore kind of cheesy humor in, right. the, in the Craig Bonds. There it's is still that. there. But, like, it also, like, they make, the, the way Craig plays it, like, he does seem like a, uh, what's that? A tortured soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's been through a lot. Like you, you can, you can see a lot of like the uh, I don't know. A lot of what Craig is, what uh, Craig does is just like he seems so stern and strong and all that. And like he, he has to be like Bond can't show any weakness. I pay, I'm James fucking Bond. I gotta right, be James Bond. Well, but, he has so much training and not showing like. Um, the, and the also, but he's part but he's being the, a thing and help those cool scenes. Like, it's true. But like he doesn't love parkour. He's the first Bond where, like, I mean, like you're saying though, Craig is the first Bond where I really fucking buy, where I really, where I just really buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm buying the experience. I'm being sold. Like that whole like, you know, he's he's being this way not necessarily because he chooses to, but you know, he's got stuff to hide or you know. Yeah. But that like Daniel Craig really fucking sells well, and that. That's why. Kind of in, that in those movies too. That's yeah. why I like. Skyfall, it being about his family home. Yes. Oh, yeah. I thought that was awesome. Like, learning yeah. more about Bond? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That was fucking great. Oh, yeah. No. Then, like, you know, S Skyfall... I mean, Skyfall is like a Tarantino movie. Like, yeah, yeah. it's two and a half, three hours Who long, but it? you I'm sit through it, it was... and you are like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Right. Didn't, and uh, then at the end of it, you're like, oh, that was three hours? Didn't even fucking notice. Didn't Guy right. Ritchie make that one? Someone Did like... He? I, Guy Ritchie, I, I love Guy Ritchie. I think he like, had something to do with one of the later Bond films, I, like fucking Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels, like Classic. Snatch, and like Classic. Rock and Roller. I love. Oh yeah, even Rock and Roller was funny. So good, but yeah. So back to the the actual like ending of that. So 
He pulls over to get these flowers off his car for some goddamn reason. The teenagers. Because teenagers, and like you can't have teenagers making fun of you, you're James goddamn fucking well, it's like It's like John Mulaney said, you know, 13-year-olds are the most vicious. He's like, look at this guy with the feminine hips. <laughs> That's the thing I'm sensitive about. Look at a high-waisted right? man with the feminine hips. <laughs> Love it. Right. So, yeah, and like honestly... It just annoys me. Like, if they would have come around the other side. Right, if they were going up the up hill. Up the hill instead, instead of down a, the yes. hill. The angle would have made more sense. But no, like, it's like, I get you it. need that bullet be right in the it's, middle of the screen. It's to go cliche. right to your fucking you center need, of her head. You need the Guy single Ritchie, bullet hole in the window. And Guy Ritchie didn't direct any of the Bond movies. He did direct uh, the Sherlock Holmes movies, the new ones with Robert Downey Jr., which I love. They're Those great. great. And I guess he directed the new uh, live-action Aladdin with Will Smith, which wasn't bad. <laughs> I... I personally wow. liked it. Yeah. That, but talk about a fucking... Right. I don't know. It sounds like he's got bills he needs to pay. <laughs> Let's get Guy Ritchie. Because Aladdin does not sound like a Guy Ritchie film to me. Again, as someone Sam who Mendes. grew up on right. Hold Snatch. On. Sam Mendes directed Skyfall. And my friend Davey loves Sam Mendes. He also did familiar. Jarhead. And That's a pretty good one. I didn't but. care for it. So and also like the then that that was the police officer rolls up there yeah on the, on the motor, little little motor scooter mm-hmm. motorbike and like like immediately speak. afterwards you know? yeah couldn't and have been there to stop it and he doesn't say anything he just rolls up and then you just have fucking Bond just lamenting Bond, lamenting just, you know, delivering there. his monologue you know oh my beautiful uh, oh. it's like uh, so much woe was woe is me there man right. like uh, hold on Sam Mendes also did American Beauty. Uh, Kevin Spacey's canceled, but American Beauty is. He a wrote a Perdition, which I love. Wrote a Perdition. Yeah, that's a good one. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, he did Jarhead, Revolutionary Road, which I didn't see it because it looked too like waspy for me. Um, um, he American Beauty would be a good good one to do for a later episode. Yeah, he did Skyfall, There's which I absolutely un- love. Pack there. Um. um so, yeah, it, the ending just seemed both dragged out and dragged out for, like, the wrong reasons. Half the movie felt like Half, it was the yeah. ending. I, I, I just... Well, and the thing, well, you know... Such a bad ending. They, they drive by in a car. Blofeld was injured. You see he was on, like, a neck brace or right. something. I don't remember why mm-hmm, something he was like injured. And well, he, because it was the, the fucking avalanche that they all mysteriously yeah. survived. They are yeah. all caught... In this gigantic avalanche, like they're not the fucking, Swiss Alps, they're not like folded up like Swiss pretzels, like. Yeah. And they just they just get up and walk away, and they're just like, "Oh, blimey!" Well, no, I, I don't think <laughs> Americans realize how dangerous avalanches are. Like how much, no. like yeah, snow. It's just like the the joke. Um, what weighs more? No, well, the, the mountain ranges in America. You know, I I don't know much about geography, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not too wrong here when I say the mountain ranges in America aren't. Piss compared to like mountain ranges in yeah. Europe and Asia. I don't fucking know. I've never had money to travel. Well, well they say, say they say what what Sorry, weigh, what weighs more? Blues. What weighs more? A pound of feathers or a pound of iron? Well, a pound is a pound. Exactly. Just, so it's just like yeah, there's a, a, a like fifty pounds of snow, but fifty pounds of snow on you still feels like fifty pounds. Right. I mean, exactly. sur- surfers still get crushed and rolled around, and then you know when they get. Hit by a fucking waves and pulled under for the, from the, like the riptide and whatnot and like they, right? Yeah, get, they should have like you said they should have looked like fucking pretzels, or yeah, accordions when mm-hmm. they get out of there. And Bond and Bond literally just w- gets up and like walks away, and they're literally just able to dig the girl out and just like grab the girl and they they do they just like and that's that, it's that simple. Gee, I'm gonna go survive an avalanche now. Okay, and the the reason why I think it's the worst movie, one of the reasons why, and yes, yes, some of the early Connery isn't very good, but they hadn't established a legacy with Bond. This is true. Um, when they did that, they didn't quite. They, they well, were they, they probably even, stayed closer to the source material, which is very. Well, dense. I remember reading somewhere too is, uh, you know, even by the time they were on like the third or fourth Bond, they really didn't know that the series was going to take off. They didn't. Mm-hmm. They really didn't think that. You know, even like I said, even like into like the fourth or fifth. Goldfinger Connor, and Diamonds like, Are you know, Forever eh. are so good. They're timeless. Right. Yes. Any I any agree. any time someone's like, I don't know how to feel about Bond, I go mm. watch uh, Goldfinger. And if you like that, watch Diamonds Are Forever. And then yeah. Diamonds Are Forever isn't that the first one that had like 
two of the henchmen, the villains, were like a gay couple. They were like, let's go, Mr. Hand. And he's like, let's go, Mr. And they're like holding hands and like... Think so. Yeah. Think yeah. So. They're like, the, the two henchmen are always holding hands and like right. assassins. And I think, I think I thought that was really funny. I mean, my introduction to Bond, my first Bond was from Russia with Love. And I thought that was just so fucking good. So cool. Like just what, I don't know. What I need a, to rewatch that timeless one. Timeless spy movie. I but, need to rewatch it. Uh, with with me, it's Goldfinger and Diamonds Are Forever. And I mean, I I was thinking Diamonds Are Forever, but I said from Russia with Love, but from Diamonds Diamonds Are Forever and Goldfinger. Yeah, like, like getting into spy favorite. movies, honestly, oddly enough, like Austin Powers got <laughs> yeah. me into spy movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I can see that because everyone loves a Swedish penis pump. Well, I mean, honestly, the, it's not mine. I mean, the thing about Austin Powers is, it's. I mean, it's not disrespectful to the uh-uh. source material. Yeah, at all. He doesn't know much. You can t- yeah, exactly. Like you can tell they love the 007 films. When, That's yeah, why Mike, they're Mike, Mike Myers like loved those films, and you know his his father loved like those uh, right. films. Right. Well, and the fact that they got Michael Caine in the third movie as Austin Powers' father. I love mean, it. You know, he's you know he's one of the great greatest British actors. Well, one of the funny things about it is they actually used some of the the footage from one of the Bond movies. Um, they they just took it right from one of the Bond movies. It was showing like a rocket going off mm-hmm. when Doctor Evil blasted off, mm-hmm. or one one of the one of the the toward, towards the end when they launched the rocket and they're like, oh, it looks like a penis or yeah. whatever. Like that whole like that rocket supposedly that whole just clip was taken from a Bond movie That's and funny. then everyone reacting to it. That's funny. So right. I'd have to check my sources on that, but, but I'm yeah, pretty so, sure. But yeah, but yeah, Bond. Bond films, there's gonna be good ones and bad ones, and like I feel like I feel like like bottom line, skip it, skip skip this one, skip this one. You're not gonna miss much. Like watch the it's, ending, maybe it's it's non non canonical. It doesn't. Really I you, mean, the honestly, the like the only real joy I got out of rewatching this movie this morning to prepare for this podcast, the only real moment of joy I got in this movie was very early on when they're trying to you know, set him up as the, the fake genealogist and he goes to that you know, that college in Britain and the guy's like, Oh, I found your family crest bond. The look your fa- you know, your family has chosen a great motto. Uh the world is not enough. And I was like, Ah yeah, that's cool. But that was like the single, single moment in this three hour fuck fest. Yeah. That I was like, oh yeah, cool. You know what I mean? Because later they'd call back to it with a movie world is not enough. Well, like, exactly, exactly. Yeah. They could have made it a shorter film and cut a lot yeah. of things out. Dude, if they cut like, if they cut like forty five minutes off oh, yeah. of this movie, it would have been, it would be so much better. Yeah. I watched it once and I said I wouldn't watch it again, and then I was just watching the ending just because. just to prep, right? Yeah. yeah. And I pulled but, it up for you because I didn't know you got up early to watch it, but I mean, like. It's just the the story wasn't the story wasn't too great. It's like you said, it's, it's oh, a little flimsy of a story. Funny. Again, I am I am so I am so leery of. I mean, this goes for all media, books, movies, video games. I am so so leery of the the uh, the narrative concept of you know you have a character they either infiltrate a place or get kidnapped, they escape. They have to go back for some reason and destroy the place and escape a second time. Yeah. Like, for fuck's it's, sake. It's like the but wait, there's more. Right. Billy like, Mays here for this ending. Right. Like, but what, wait, there's more. Like, what is this fucking Wolfenstein? Like, please, Oof, give, give me a break. Right. Like, I don't know. It's like yeah. that, that episode of Rick and Morty where he meets the guy that's in the, the lighthouse and he's yeah. he, he wants to review his oh, script. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a very brief joke, but I've always really agreed with the sentiment. You know, Morty's like, Morty's like, he's like, you know, the script is like two weeks before that. And Marty's like, well, if you have a story, why don't you just tell the story from the beginning? Yeah. I, I agree with that sentiment kind of. Yeah. Like, Flashbacks and other tricks are cool and stuff, but if you have a story, just tell the story. You can start two like weeks this. before, right? Stuff like this, like like a, like a, like a Kill Bill, the first one, like how it starts out, right? Then it's like, oh, let's rewind, right? Like, I love you, Quentin Tarantino, but 
the the Kill Bills, in my opinion, are Tarantino's low points. Yeah, like that's probably a pretty controversial statement because they're still, the most mainstream. I still, I still, and there's they're they're good popcorn flicks. They oh fuck yes they are. And like that's kind of the shut thing, your like, brain off, watch them. They're great. Like if you have the time, yeah, sure, check the movie out, get an opinion for yourself. If you're I mean, if you're going to sit down and watch every Bond movie all the way through, yeah, definitely. I mean, this is one of the Bond movies. Watch it. Just make sure, uh, make sure you yeah. got some coffee or something to keep you awake for this one. I mean, you definitely will fall asleep. I yeah. was like, struggling to stay awake re-watching it. Yeah, like, even thinking about it, like I wanted to re rewatch it. I was like, I don't even know if I can fucking sit through it. But, you know, like... So now I'm it, going off memory here from the first time I watched it and the first and last time I watched it. It's just... It, it's, it's just... To me, to me, the whole thing of, you know, character infiltrates or gets kidnapped, goes to yeah. the base, escapes, goes back, destroys base, and the movie. Because, all, because that, that, that setup, that narrative structure, always has the same, same point in the movie. And, and On Her Majesty's Secret Service has this point where the first time he's in there, he's infiltrating it. They discover he's 007. Yeah. Because, oh, a genealogist isn't going around fucking allergic girls. Yeah. <laughs> So they discover he's he's 007. Yeah. You know, they put him under the weird psycho shit they're doing to the girls to try to brainwash him. Yeah. He somehow magically escapes. But it's it's just like in Austin Powers when Seth Green is like, Dad, I have a gun. Why don't we shoot yeah. him? Yeah. He, he, he explains everything yeah. to James Bond, gives away his whole game. It's like, I'm going to call the United Nations tomorrow and tell them. He's like... But we have the vaccines and the viruses, and how do you think that foot and mouth outbreak in London happened? And it's like, gee, guy, you've 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 given up everything, and this is a James Bond movie. Like, let me check my watch here. Like, you know, he's going to escape in two point five seconds. Yeah. Like, every coming every... monologuing. Right. Like it. It's. I. I it really to... does not do any favors to the stereotypes that the James Bond series has built up over the years. I. I honestly. Yeah. That's what this movie felt like. It felt like three and a half hours of all of the worst stereotypes about Bond movies that everyone can think about crammed into one movie. So I always have something that I joke. I used to joke about uh, anytime anyone mentions like getting a vasectomy. I always think about that part and the, the old James Bond trope where he's like tied to a board and the laser's laser. going you up. You expect me the... to talk? <laughs> no, Mr. Bond. Right. I, I expect you, you to die. die. What movie is that from? I've uh, seen it. I've seen the actual like... I'd rather watch, I don't know, I'd rather watch Agent Cody Banks than watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> right on. I'd rather so, watch Agent Cody Banks too. Frankie Muniz, Hillary ugh. Duff. Fucking. So Matt and I agree it's the worst Bond film and, and Ben doesn't. No, I don't know. After, there, after, there are several Bond films. After litigating this for about an hour, I think I'm going to have to change my initial, where I was like, um, I'm going to be a dissenter and I'm going to say it's not the worst. I don't know. Right, I, I'm I'm kind of convincing myself more and more. Yeah, this, this really might be the lowest point in the series. It wasn't too great, and I don't think it was a George L Lazenby. Lazenby. Uh, it wasn't George Lazenby's fault. Like he did what he could. You know the other thing about this movie, and maybe again, maybe this is just yeah. me being nitpicky and and complaining about things, but I I genuinely also thought that this had the worst score. Out of any of the bonds, I, I was not a huge fan of the score of this one. I don't and know. also, every Bond movie has, you know, towards the climax that final sequence where it's like a big action sequence. Yeah, and they, yes. and they played the Bond song. Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. You know, every Bond movie has that climax where the song comes in and it starts out with the spy guitar and then it breaks into you know the full band. Yeah. Yeah. Horns come in. I love it. Golly G, did I? They picked the worst fucking spot for that sequence for that song was it the in this one. Part? No, I don't remember which. It was remember. one of the several skiing parts. I just remember there was like a lot of skiing and like helicopter shots, and there were some gunshots. But like, I don't know. I just thought because there's always a chase, and that's usually where they put some exactly, form of yes. the thing. Like, is it a boat? Is it on foot? Right. Is it in a car, a motorcycle, of the fucking Swiss Alps? I thought, like, hands down, easily, of all the Bond movies, this was the Bond movie that used the Bond song in, you know, the, the action sequence Bond, in Bond, the Bond, worst Bond. way. 
I, it just did not fit so, what I was seeing on the screen. But I feel this fits. I did feel that it was fitting, you know, good movie, bad ending. Now I think we're going to lump it in with good franchise, bad movie. Yeah. You know, which yeah. is a whole nother subplot that I didn't even think of. We uh, could it still do for fits this, like but, the whole yeah, nebulous story thing whack. that we're going for. All right. Well, let's story go ahead whack. and Directing slap whack. a bow on this score and whack. wrap this one up. Uh, so, yeah, overall, so yeah. this one was pretty whack. Right? <laughs> right on. Whack. Thanks for joining us for another episode of That Can't Be The End. Join me and Phil again next week where we'll discuss another film.